Hi folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner and we're going to look at today uh, methods of loading a black powder shot shell. And a little bit of frustration of mine is when I look up on the internet how to load uh, black powder shot shells. A lot of folks will, will take a regular uh, hull and plastic modern hull and a plastic cushion wad, put black powder in the, in the case, put the cushion wad in, put in your shot and crimp it shut and call that a, a black powder shot shell. And in reality I guess that works. There's a couple of problems with it. One is it's not authentic and that kind of bugs me because I'm kind of in the history of this thing. And uh, I'd rather have have a more authentic cartridge. The second thing is black powder burns really, really hot. And when it burns that hot, it doesn't take long at all to start putting plastic down the barrel. And so you've got a lot of fouling that your plastic wad is, is going through. Uh, there's no lubricant really with it. And on top of that, you're melting the plastic from that super hot fire uh, from black powder and sending that down the barrel. So you have a lot of plastic deposits along with being inauthentic. And so today we're going to take a look at how we can load a more authentic black powder shotgun shell. And I've got some paper ones. These are federal paper, paper cartridges. They're still available uh, today. You can get your hands on these. So we're going to use some paper cartridges from federal. Uh, just a regular 209 primer. We're going to use a, let me see if I can reach it here, uh, black powder. It's just a double F Go X black powder. And over the powder, I've got an over powder wad that comes from uh, an old box of Winchester wads. This has been through the ringer, but the wads are perfectly good. Thankfully, I have a, a friend who used to own an antique store, so I've got a lot of the original wads that would have been used in the days of the paper cartridges. So we'll put an over, over powder wad, and then I've got a half inch cushion wad, and again, uh, these are Winchester cushion wads from uh, just before paper plastic cartridges, so they're not necessarily from the 1800s, but it's the same kind of method. So I've got the uh, cushion wads that go on top of the over powder wad and then we're going to put in shot and then I've got the over shot wad and we'll crimp this with an antique shotgun crimper and all it is is you put the shotgun shell in one end hold it tight crank this and this gives you a nice roll crimp on the top like the original shotgun shells so we're going to use a little bit of old equipment a little bit of new equipment and uh, in the end we'll have ourselves a real authentic looking shot shell uh, that's, that's paper and looks much more like they would have had in the Old West period. So the first thing I'm going to do in this process is I've got a, a modern yet uh, authentic paper shot shell but it's two and three quarter inch and I'm loading for a antique WW Greener English shotgun and one of the characteristics of an English shotgun uh, is that they normally would have two and a half inch chambers and so I measured the chambers on the on this uh, WW Greener and as expected uh, did have a two and a half inch chamber so I got a two and three quarter inch shell so I picked up a product from Ballistic Products that will trim this down it's got a uh, preset stopper here and if I put my 12 gauge shell over it and work it through this blade I can cut these right down to two and a half inch and have a shot shell then that's going to work in my uh, WW Greener English shotgun. So that was the first step. I wanted to get these shortened a little bit. It does a couple of things for us. One is it gets it to the right length. The other nice thing is, is uh, the star crimp had been on these, uh, was used on these paper shells and it cuts off the star crimp. So now I've got a nice crisp edge to, uh, to start this process with and start reloading this shotgun shell. All right, so the first step I'm going to do here is I'm going to deprime this thing. So I'm going to I'll use a combination of the really the modern equipment that we've got today and some really old equipment. If you're doing this without a shotgun reloader, uh, it can be done. And really, all you need to do is have a, a board with a hole in it and a nail punch and a hammer. You can get the the primer out, and they really don't seat that that hard, so you can reprime it that way as well and then you can use a dowel uh, to put in the over powder wad and all the rest of it uh, as well but I've got I do have the machine here so I'm going to go ahead and use it so we're going to go ahead and pop out our old primer and our two and a half inch shell I'm going to size it just because I've got the sizer there just in case and I'm going to put in a new a new primer so I've got a new 209 primer 
inside of this shell, which is actually overkill. So when you think about authenticity and reality, I've got a, I've got a couple old shells. They would just use a regular rifle primer uh, back in the black powder days. And the reason being that black powder is a lot easier to ignite, they used a, you just needed a, a spark with a flintlock for a couple hundred years to ignite black powder. Smokeless powder is a lot harder to ignite, and so the 209 primer, when you had a big volume of it like you do in a shotgun shell, was really invented for, for smokeless powder. So it's not authentic, but that's what we've got, and uh, so that's what we're going to use. But just knowing that back in the day, didn't necessarily have to have that, that 209 primer. So I've got my black powder uh, measurer here and uh, I've got it set up for 80 grains. I'm going to put an 80 grain load of double F powder. So I got my Go X double F in my black powder powder measure. So I'm just going to tap a little in there. I put the uh, drop tubes on it. I don't really think it's necessary with a 12 gauge because you're not trying to put the powder down inside of a narrow little tube like you would if you had a 45 or 50 caliber. But I just let, went ahead and left the the uh, drop tube on it anyway, sure it won't hurt anything. I'll just do it one more. We're going to drop 80 grains in here by pretty much by volume. I did verify weight just to know that make sure I wasn't way way off, uh, and I was pretty much pretty much on the money. So uh, we've got 80 grains by by volume that's been put in a double F powder, and so the next step is I'll throw in the over powder wad. So here's another modern piece of machinery that's kind of handy. I've got a, a compression die here that is uh, made for a 12 gauge and I've got a reloading die made for a 12 gauge made from uh, made by RCBS. So I've got this compression die set where I where I want it so that I can put my over powder wad and my cushion wad down inside here and have it compressed the consistently to the same place. So I'm going to go ahead and put a over powder wad in here first and then a compression wad and I'm going to let that piston in there compress this right down uh, consistently where I want it. If you don't have one of these uh, one of these dies you can certainly uh, use again uh, a dowel and the difficulty with that is the is a consistent compression uh, but it's possible. It's definitely doable and uh, I've got the machinery and I'll, when we do a video on brass cartridges we'll show you what that's all about as well and resizing them with this die. But for paper I'm just going to use it because I can get a compression die in there. I'll do one more, that second cartridge. Set it down to where I wanted it and now I've got two cartridges with the powder in it compressed slightly and the over powder wad and the cushion wad. So the next step here is we're going to put the shot in. Well we've got our 12 gauge shell that has uh, black powder, 80 grains double F black powder. We've got our over shot wad and we've got our cushion wad in there as well. So I'm going to drop in one and one eighth ounce of number six shot. I'm going to work on some number six shot shells today. And one thing I should mention, the fiber wads that I used that I was able to uh, actually given to me as a gift from a friend that's got an antique store and so they're the same kind of wad that would have been used even though these are uh, 1900s wads but I didn't mention that I did drop these in a pan and I pan lubed, lubed them with a vigilante bullet lube and these things I expected to have some wax around the outside not realizing that it would draw up like a wick really all the bullet lube that I had in the pan so I've got a very well lubed wad and I am I'm actually pleased by that because when I was done I had no no more bullet lube in my pan I just warmed it up and it, it just wicked it all up each of these these I've got a couple of varieties I've got this one that's a Winchester uh, this one that's a Remington, exact same uh, sort of material, just different colors. And uh, both of them pulled up really well, just wicked up really well the bullet lube. So I've got some very nice lubed uh, cushion wads that'll, that'll be helpful with black powder fouling and uh, as these things sling down the barrel. So with that, now that I've got my cushion wad in, I'm going to go ahead and put in my one and one eighth ounce, number six shot. And again, you don't have to have a reloader to do this. You can do this with a, with a scoop. You can 
pour in your powder by, by volume with a scoop as well. And use a dowel if, you, uh, if that's all you got in putting your wads down in. So now that I've got these two uh, ready to roll, I'm going to do the last step. I'm going to pull out a couple more of the overshot wads here. So these, this is the last step besides the crimp. This is the last component that's going to go in the shell. So I'll put these over the top and then we will move to our antique crimping piece and get a crimp on these things and uh, we'll have ourselves some 12 gauge authentically made black powder shotgun shells. So I've got all my components in here. I've got my shot, my overshot wad. So I'm going to put it in this antique roll crimper and you just turn the handle, push the shot shell in, pull it back out again and we've got a roll crimped 12 gauge shotgun shell. I'm going to do my other one. Set that in. Burn that down and I've got a roll crimp 12 gauge shotgun shell. This little space here is a good place to put uh, the shot size and uh, any other information you want to put on the shell. You can even, if you are afraid of it, open them back up on you. Uh, put a little uh, Elmer's glue around the inside to hold it. That doesn't hurt anything either. Maybe waterproof it a little bit too. And uh, yeah, we've got a we've got a 12 gauge completed shotgun shell. Uh, same sort of method that would have been used in the 1800s. So I've got some shot shells ready to go. We'll go out to the range and test these in our in our next video. I did want to mention though, a lot of folks uh, believe that the brass shotgun shell uh, came out before the paper shotgun shell and uh, in reality paper shotgun shells had been around invented in the pinfire paper shot shell was invented in 1836 very popular in Europe never really caught on in the United States matter of fact a lot of folks would shoot uh, percussion shotguns clear up into the 1900s because uh, they had one and it worked for them and there wasn't any use going out and, and buying a new, a new shotgun. But paper shells were, were converted to central fire, which is where they would call it in the old days, clear back in 1861. So there are paper shotgun shells that were center fire, like we say today, uh, in 1861 that would be available. Now the brass cartridge came out uh, about the same time, uh, early 1870s and it, it, late 1860s, and then uh, even a, an improved model came out in the 1870s. And so we'll do some brass shot shells also, and there's a little bit of a difference is, is definitely uh, from the size of the case. And so we'll talk about that when we get to the, to the brass shot shell. One thing to note, uh, if you're thinking, well, this is great, you got a friend with an antique store and then you got old equipment and all of that, uh, all of these components are available online. And if you look around, uh, the over, the over uh, uh, shot wad that I used is from Circle Fly. And, and so there's, there's some companies out still making the components. Now, one thing I do want to warn you about, and that's something we'll talk about with the uh, brass shot shell, uh, which will take a regular 12 gauge wad. These paper shells are going to take a smaller wad because the 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 really the it's, it's the thickness of the paper that makes the difference. And so, if you try to put a 12 gauge shotgun wad from a muzzle loading shotgun down inside this paper cartridge, that wad is too big and it's gonna swell out the sides of your paper cartridge and make this thing so it won't chamber. And so if you are interested in, in loading paper cartridges, you, the, probably the best thing to do is just call a company that sells the, the wadding and say, hey, I'm gonna load paper cartridges. I want one a little bit smaller than a muzzle loading wad because I don't wanna swell my case and, and not be able to chamber uh, the, uh, the round. And so be cautious of that. Don't just go online, see 12 gauge, click on it, order a bunch of 12 gauge wads that are made for a muzzle loader, which obviously has no case to it at all. And uh, you'll need a little bit smaller wad for, for, a, uh, for, a, paper, for a paper case because the walls of the paper case are, are much thicker 
then obviously if you had nothing in there at all like you would if you're loading a muzzle loading shotgun but they're a lot of fun you can load them any way you want uh, you can obviously vary the the powder charge uh, the the key is to fill up the case and find that formula of over shot wad or excuse me over powder wad and then your cushion wad and then your shot so that you leave enough room for the crimp and you don't leave too much room that, that they're rattling around so it just takes a little bit of experimentation and you'll get the hang of it and there are a lot of they're easy to load fun to shoot and we will see you out at the range next time on frontier western heritage and we'll shoot some 12 gauge shells out of a ww greener there there's there's really nothing wrong with it other than you're gonna oh, shoot start over would you new plastic shot shell casing and then uh, a fight or cushion lot jeez I, I started it over, so. and if I put this on and let the spring clamp down on the blade and move this around then I'm gonna have a mess <laughs>